If you've ever driven into Toronto from the northwest, you've probably used Allen Road to get into Midtown from the Highway 401, which is lovely, until Allen Road just ends and you're dumped onto the traffic nightmare that is Eglinton. Why does Allen Road just kind of come to a grinding halt? The answer lies in a cancelled highway, the Spadina Expressway, a piece of infrastructure whose partial construction and then cancellation divided Toronto for years. The Spadina Expressway had been the planning stage since the 1940s, and was originally part of a massive infrastructure scheme that led to the creation of such national treasures as the Gardener and the DVP. The plan evolved over time, but in a nutshell, Metro Toronto wanted to build a highway south from the 401, through to Lawrence and Eglinton, sounds familiar so far, then to wind southeast through the Nordenheimer and Cedarvale ravines until it crossed St. Clair and met West Spadina itself after which it would widen Spadina and go south until it met the Crosstown Expressway, which never got built. So Spadina would descend until it just kind of stopped south of Bloor somewhere. The expressway was designed to make it easier for suburban residents to get into downtown, and understandably, it was a pretty popular project in said suburbs, and the project was accordingly supported by suburban councillors and the government of Ontario, but not popular at all with downtown residents and those in the expressway's path, whose neighbourhoods and homes would be expropriated and or divided. Despite the opposition, the Metro Toronto Council approved the Spadina project in the early 1960s, but downtown residents did not give up that easily, and over the coming years, the city saw one of the biggest mobilizations of public opposition in its history. This movement, which we'll be calling The Opposition, spent the next decade campaigning to stop the project. The opposition was formed of a coalition of University of Toronto students and faculty, middle-class professionals, urban theorists, local ratepayer groups, and just simply local residents. They protested, lobbied politicians, spread awareness, and fought to end the Spadina project, and became increasingly organized as the decade came to a close, becoming part of a larger North American movement against highways and cities. The opposition had quite a few grievances with the project. They worried about the destruction of the important immigrant community south of Davenport, of loss of business, of pollution from exhaust and noise, the loss of park space in the ravines, and overall held the belief that the funding could be better spent on welfare projects and public transit. Despite the best efforts of the opposition, the Spadina Expressway's construction slowly continued. By 1966, construction had reached Lawrence, and by 1970, it had reached Eglinton. When the Toronto Metro Council again voted to continue the project that same year, the opposition appealed that decision to the Ontario Municipal Board to stop the project. The OMB was an unelected administrative board made up of members appointed by the provincial government, much like the electoral boundary commissions discussed in our writing video. For simplicity's sake, the OMB was only accountable to the provincial government and was empowered to manage local municipalities and approve things like their spending or their infrastructure. Like miniature judicial hearings, the OMB heard the grievances of the opposition, listened to the project's advocates, and noted the arguments of experts. Finally, the three-man board reached its decision in February 1971, two to one, in favor of the Spadina Expressway continuing. But the dissenting arguments of OMB Chairman Joseph Kennedy proved crucial to the next steps of this struggle. Kennedy insisted that the protection of the few's rights against the democratic will of the many was valid, and that the public interest in the Spadina Expressway was insufficient to ignore these minority rights. This dissenting opinion gave the opposition an acceptable reason to again appeal, this time to the provincial government itself. And a few months later, it was over. In a mildly anticlimactic end, the provincial government overruled Metro Toronto and the OMB's decision, killing the Spadana Expressway project, with the already built bits north of Eglinton becoming Allen Road in the years to come. We don't know the exact reason the provincial government killed the project, but then Premier Bill Davis said if we are building a transportation system to serve the automobile, the Spadina Expressway would be a good place to start. But if we are building a transportation system to serve people, the Spadina Expressway is a good place to stop. Throughout the planning and construction process, the Spadina Expressway had the democratic support of the elected majority in Toronto and of elected provincial governments. It's a classic case of democratic legitimacy at conflict with the legitimacy of minority rights. These kinds of conflicts between the will of the majority and the rights of the few are found all around us today. It's an enduring balancing act that democracies must contend with, and we need to think about that balance as both responsive and proactive citizens. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more loving videos about Canadian issues. Have a good one.